Good morning, and welcome to this year's annual Founders Day program. I'm A.O. Fleming. I'm the Vice President for University Advancement and Executive Director of the Albany State University Foundation. It's my pleasure to welcome you this morning and introduce a few colleagues here with me on the stage today. But first, we'll begin with our invocation, which will be provided by Pastor Ken Bevel of the Sherwood Baptist Church. Pastor Bevel. Thank you. Good morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for today. Today is just such a special day. 120 years ago, a man had a vision, and that vision was to bring education and God's word to this community. And God, because of that, this community has flourished and grown and produced leaders. And so, Lord, today we come to tell you thank you. And so, God, as we celebrate this very uh, momentous occasion, God, would you be with us and bless the ceremony. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And next this morning, we will be regaled by a selection from the ASU Chamber Singers under the direction of Dr. Marsha Hood, followed by the occasion and welcome by Mr. and Miss Albany State University, Jonathan Holloway and Miss Brianna Pierce. Dr. Hood. Good morning. Good morning. I am Jonathan Holloway, a senior visual and performing arts major heading from Atlanta, Georgia. And I proudly serve as the 10th Mr. Albany State University. Today, we celebrate 120 years of potential being realized and excellence being the standard. We commemorate the vision of our founder, Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly where his vision came to light in 1903 on the banks of the Flint River. Dr. Holly's legacy and leadership has been a dominant factor in the city of Albany and it continues to shine in each and every one of us today. Founders Day Convocation is a way to honor the past, 
celebrate the present, and guide us to the future. It is a way to connect the bridge between alumni, students, faculty, and staff. A way to share how we have overcome adversity while remaining unsinkable and indestructible for 120 years. So, today, we, could, we embrace the history and lessons that will take place during this occasion. Let's continue to build upon Dr. Holly's legacy and vision. Thank you. Greetings and humble salutations. I am Brianna Marcia Pierce, the 80th Miss Albany State University, a graduating senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, by way of Snellville, Georgia. <laughs> Welcome to a Ram Renaissance, where we cherish our 120 year long past while fulfilling our future. The number 120 signifies courage, success, and positivity. All of which our founder, Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly, possessed. In 1903, when Dr. Holly had a vision to provide education to African Americans in Georgia, a school that started as Albany Bible and Manual Training Institute that consisted of five students in 1903 has grown to the 10th largest HBCU in the nation the unsinkable and indestructible Albany State University. Today, Dr. Holly's legacy consists of three campuses, 48 buildings, 11 residence halls, and 10 sports facilities. Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly started an institution that we will honor and ever behold. Thank you. Thank you, both Dr. Hood and Mr. and Miss ASU. Next, it's a pleasure to introduce a member of the Holly family who's with us today. Miss Holly Jefferson herself sends her regrets she was unable to be here. However, we have with us Miss Cheryl Willis, who is the great niece of founder Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly. We'll then have another selection from Dr. Hood and the ASU Chamber Singers. Miss Willis. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Frederick, members of the dais, faculty, students, friends, and family members. I am Cheryl Y. Willis, the ancestral niece of Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly. On behalf of Josephine Holly Jefferson, daughter of Dr. Holly, it is my esteemed pleasure to greet you on this 120th Founders Day. We as family are delighted to celebrate and reflect with you on this year's theme, a Ram Renaissance. When one thinks of the word Renaissance, revival or change are thoughts that come to mind. Albany State University has always been on the ever-changing continuum so that its students can meet the demands in the time in which we live. Change is what makes us grow both the changes we choose to make as well as the, our response to changes that come our way. The changes that we as individuals and collectively make can make a lasting impact. As you move forward in your lives, consider how you can respond positively to the changes that will surely come that you won't necessarily be able to control, but also, and perhaps more importantly, Consider what changes you can make, no matter how small, that will make some difference in the world. Remember, Dr. Holly was one man who believed he could change the world, and he did. You are his dream realized. From a small agricultural college into a thriving university, I will reiterate, you are Dr. Je are Dr. Holly's dream realized and fulfilled. Embracing change requires a certain element of risk taking, but without that risk, without that embrace, nothing moves forward. So dream big changes you can make. Embrace change that enters your life. Work for positive change, no matter how small. Hold fast to your dreams. As you embrace the positive changes that your generation is fortunate to claim as your own be catalysts for even greater achievements
for those who will follow. After all, it's a ram renaissance. In the words of Sam Cooke, it's been a long, a long time coming, but I know a change don't come. Oh, yes, it will. <laughs> Blessings as you move ahead toward the many new and exciting changes that will come in your lives. Again, thank you for the invitation to celebrate with you and to be a witness to the legacy of growth and change here at Albany State University. as the Student Government Association President here at the unsinkable, indestructible Albany State University. We are gathered here today to honor our founder, Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly, and celebrate the 120th anniversary of our illustrious institution. I have been given the task to introduce our speaker for today's Founders Day Convocation. I was a little nervous to take on this huge task to introduce a legend who presence in any room speaks for itself. She was born and raised in this good life city of Albany, Georgia, and is a proud graduate of Albany State College, class of 1970, where she obtained her bachelor's in music. But may I say, how grateful am I to say my alumnus is one of the original freedom singers. From 1961 to 1962, she joined the Albany, Georgia civil rights movement and became one of the original freedom singers. In her role, she traveled over 50,000 miles singing for freedom and raising funds for the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. Along with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., she was jailed four times during this movement. Her professional career began in 1963 when she signed a deal with Mercury, Mercury Records. Ruth May has recorded with singers such as Whitney Houston and with the Georgia Mass Choir. She has performed in over, in over 46 states in locations such as Carnegie Hall, the Smithsonian Institution, and the White House. She was an educator at Monroe Comprehensive High School for over 30 years before retiring, where their auditorium has been named in her honor. Over, 30, over the years, Ruth May has received various accolades and awards for her music performances, com community out outreach, and activism. These accolades and awards include the keys to the city of Albany, Georgia, and a certificate of special congressional recognition in achievement, service, 
and public distinction on behalf of Congressman Sanford D. Bishop Jr. ASU students, faculty, staff, and alumni and community members, please join me in welcoming our guest speaker, the legendary Miss Ruth May Harris. They say that freedom is a constant struggle. They say that freedom is a constant struggle. They Struggle. Oh Lord, we've been struggling so long. We must be free. We must be free. Good morning. Wow, <laughs> you all don't know how I feel at this moment. Uh, thank you for that wonderful, what is she, wonderful introduction. <laughs> President Frederick, the dais, Albany State staff and Albany State family. Thank you for bestowing upon me this honor of being your speaker for the 120th anniversary of the unthinkable, indestructible ASU, honoring our beloved founder and first president, Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly. This is my first Founders Day on campus as your speaker. <laughs> I have attended many Founders Days as an alumnus. I must confess, it is a delight to be standing right here at this moment where I am standing. Today is a celebration, a convocation, a calling together. That is, we are gathered to solemnly reflect upon our past and how it relates to our current moment and to our future. Part of any honest reflection on the past requires honoring the parts that fill us with pride and critically analyzing where we have fallen short. We do this not sully the good, but to empower ourselves to continually strive forward. As a singer, I'm accustomed to listening closely to the melody and the lyrics of the song and asking lots of questions about the overall meaning or background of the song. But my own way of thinking about Founders Day centers on one question in particular. What does it mean to be a founder? For obvious reasons, we think of the year 1903 when we think of the founding of Albany State College located on the east side of the French River. It was 120 years ago that the Albany Bible and Manual Training Institute was founded by Dr. Joseph Winthrop Holly, inspired by the W.E.B. Du Bois book, The Souls of Black Folk, to be an institution to provide religious and basic education, as well as teacher training to the local black population. My mom, the late Mrs. Katie B. Harris, graduated from the Albany Bible and Manual Training Institute. And while we clearly would not be here today, if not for our opening in 1903, we cannot deny that our history, like that of our state, indeed our nation, is tied up with slavery, segregation, and America's other injustices. We shouldn't shy away from these aspects of our past. Instead, we should confront them. 
and most importantly, as an educational institution with knowledge creation at our core, we must learn from them. That's why I'm proud of the significant role in the 1960s civil rights movement of 31 Albany State College students, some staff, and particularly proud of our collaboration with black improvement organizations, community members, and representatives from the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC for short, who came together to create the Albany Movement, which birthed the SNCC Freedom Singers, which I am one of the original members. In the 21st century, along with other universities, we're working together to share best practices and guiding principles about truth-telling projects that address injustices in our histories. The example of this is the ASU Criminal Justice Club. This is part of how we recognize that traditions, like people, need to grow, evolve, and expand to welcome more people into our unfolding story. We also need to recognize that not everything about ASU was founded in the Jim Crow period. For example, in 1996, the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia approved the change from college to university, and the name of the Albany State College officially became Albany State University. In 2015, with the merger of Darden State College, ASU became the largest HBCU in the state of Georgia and one of the 15 largest universities in the United States. There are over 60 clubs and organizations including bands, choirs, religious groups, honor societies, several Greek and honor societies and fraternities, ROTC, and one of our own students, Cameron Burnham. Design was chosen, featured, and is being sold in Target department stores throughout the nation. The marching band participated in the 26th Tournament of Roses Parade and the Tournament of Roses Band Fest. I could go on and on with what ASU has done in academics, art, music, and athletics, and continue to do that reflects foundation and growth. But we don't have time. <laughs> My point is that ASU is a place where many things have begun, where the act of founding is continuous. Found is a verb, an action, not a single set moment in some distant past. ASU does not rest on a rigid slab foundation, but on a growing number of piers and beams that together hold us up and expand our footprint. We are here today, and we are who we are today, because of many founders and because of a strong, dedicated, and unmovable founder. Together, Dr. Holly, they, we, and you have defined the ASU story. These milestones are point of pride, but also events that we should think about deeply as we consider our contributions to ASU today. What is it that we will found? What is it that we will found? Being a founder means being a fearless advocate. It means pushing forward for positive change, not settling for simply getting on with our work and studies, it means engaging in peaceful, radical collaboration with others. It means cultivating a respectful and open dialogue with those with whom we may disagree. It means persistently and peacefully striving on and moving forward. And it means embodying our vision statement, mission statement, and motto. These traits are critical if we are to be great founders. And we are a university that is and strives to be great in all we do. So today, I want to call us to all be founders for the future and to engage in the hard work needed to accomplish these great things. We were founded in 1903 as a manual labor college, and there is much work for all of us to do. Faculty, students, 
staff, and community, we must continue to work together like our founder to build a university to meet the challenge of the moment. Then as now, it is a story of persistence in the face of adversity, a story of creativity and innovation, and a story of resilience. We celebrate our founding because a very important kernel of who we are is lodged here. Our commitment to progressive, engaged, and equity-minded education, an education that always defied boundaries, we should all be grateful for that. And we should never forget it. I trust and know you will do all your part to carry the legacy into the future. So today, I leave you with these words. Here at Albany State University, we know our heritage is complex, and we have great respect for the complexity of our past. After all, without it, we will not be where we are today. But we are also an institution constantly looking for ways to expand the narrative, which is why we must also be globally minded people of the moment. We must take every opportunity to learn and every opportunity to teach. Moving forward, I very much look forward to what we can found together. So let me end by saying, Happy Founders Day to you. A past to cherish, that's true. A future to fulfill we do. Take pride in this day, ASU. <laughs> Happy Founders Day. Unsinkable, indestructible, ASU. Happy Founders Day to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We're just giving the group another round of applause. And thank you to Ms. Park for that wonderful introduction of Ms. Ruth May, as I affectionately call her, Ms. Ruth. So uh, next we have on the program uh, someone who needs no introduction, but I'm told I must do it anyway. Uh, we, is the 10th president of Albany State University, Dr. Mary Ross Fedrick. She'll come forward. Yes, give her a round of applause. <laughs> president Fedrick is just returning from abroad, uh, advocating for the university in the nation's capital and in Georgia, at, uh, down at uh, in Atlanta for the university under the Gold Dome. So we welcome the president back to the campus, and she's going to come forward this time for remarks and recognition of our 25-year employees. Without further ado, the 10th president of Albany State University, Dr. Marion Ross Federer. Good morning. Good morning. Before we start, can I ask our chamber choir to stand one more time? Are they not fabulous? Y'all are fabulous. Thank y'all this morning. Thank you, thank you. So thank y'all. Now I will say that I did take it as a challenge when you started doing the Sam Cooke that should be your next song. I, I expected y'all to go ahead and start, but um, <laughs> so think about that. So good morning and welcome to the unsinkable and indestructible Albany State University. I love how we own that mantra. I really love it because it is true and it's who we are. And so to the faculty, staff, students, our uh, local elected officials, and I'm going to ask you all to stand in just a second. Thank you for being here and being a part of what we're trying to make is the excellence at Albany State University. I do want to uh, welcome uh, Chairman Hurd. I saw him coming in the back. If you'll stand so we can see who you are. So welcome. And we have Mr. Warbington down at the front representing our Mayor Doro. So why don't you stand up so we can see you as well. To the Holly family, thank you all so much for always coming to Albany State and coming back to support what your ancestor is built, and this is what we, he has built. So when you look around, when you're here on campus, just know that you're a part of that, um, and that we love for you to be back here on campus. We actually have housing if you'd like to come and stay. <laughs> actually, we don't have enough housing, but uh, 
But if you want to come, just come on back. Uh, to Miss Ruth and May Harris, I love you. Thank you so much for all you do for Albany State. I know everyone in here knows her, knows her background, knows the history. Take an opportunity to have a conversation with her because that legacy that she has started with the Freedom Singers and so many other things, the awards, the accolades just keep coming. And so thank you for always loving on our institution and always being here. Thank you. Please give her another round of applause. So our founder, Dr. Joseph Winthorpe Holly, created this institution. He created an institution for a group of people that, that did not have an opportunity to be educated at the time. And when you look around and see the judges, you see the, the lawyers, you see the doctors, you see the teachers, you see so many people that have come from this institution that's pretty much running the world right now and invested in the world. When you look at the people who are here on campus and how they actually continue to support this institution, we have so many alum on campus. Sometimes I have to remind them they're not students any longer. But however, you have so many alumni on this campus that it is amazing to see the, the girth that they have for this institution and how much they love Albany State University. I will say that there is not another institution that has alumni as we have alumni at Albany State. And you can feel it, you can see it. So please, please be a part of that. This year's theme, a RAM Renaissance, I happen to think we're always in a Renaissance, by the way, but a RAM Renaissance encourages all of us to pause and to reflect on Dr. Holly's mission, on his theme, on what he gave up to make us who we are today. I am so proud to be standing on the shoulders of presidents that have come to this institution and made their mark, made their change, and made us even better than where we are and where we've ever been, and set the groundwork for where we're going. So I am so delighted, delighted that I am a part of that. And as we celebrate our founding, we would also like to honor our employees, um, 14 of whom have devoted over 25 years of service to the university. And so these employees have given a quarter of a century, that's about how old I am, uh, <laughs> times three or four, but a quarter of a century to the work of higher education. I'm gonna ask those um, employees who are here to please stand. And I'll start with Dr. Lee Fung, Professor of Mathematics, Computer Science, and Physics. Please stand. Yeah. And Dr. George Thomas, Professor of Criminal Justice. Please stand. We also have uh, faculty who are not able to be here today. Dr. Jennifer Strickland, Associate Professor, Mathematics, Computer Science, and Physics. Ms. Petrina Anderson, Assistant Director of Facilities Management. And Dr. Louise Rinsford, Executive Director, Office of Research and Sponsored Programs. Give them a round of applause as well. <laughs> Speaking of many years before I end, I would like to ask Dr. Marsha Hood to please stand. Dr. Hood. <laughs> Dr. Hood gives me, makes my heart hurt a little bit. Dr. Hood will be retiring. And so Dr. Hood, every event we have, I'm gonna call you out. Um, <laughs> But please give her a round of applause. She directs our wonderful choir. Thank you, Dr. Hood. And speaking of last, I'm going to ask Mr. A.O. Fleming to please stand. I couldn't tell him I was going to do that. Please stand. This is his last convocation. He is the mind behind so, so many things. Mr. Fleming, thank you so much for your service to Albany State. And thank you for your service that you all give to this institution again. Um, remember, we can't be who we are without you being with us. So thank you so very much for being at the unsinkable, indestructible Albany State University. And with that, I'm going to pass it back. Go Rams. Thank you, President Frederick. And congratulations, Dr. Fung, Dr. Thomas, and soon to be Dr. Hood. Uh, uh, I, my task is to provide some brief remarks and to share with you some announcements as the Chamber of Singers come as we prepare for the alma mater. Uh, I'd like to say immediately following today's Founders Day program, we'll have our uh, gravesite ceremony. So please join us at the gravesite on the lower campus. Additionally, later today, there are several National Alumni Association events. And while I'm at it, if we have members of our National Alumni Association, would you please stand and be recognized? I know we have our National Alumni President, Dr. Thomas, and Vice President, Ms. Goff, here as well. 
several of you here. Thank you. And for that matter, for all alumni, why don't you please stand? All alumni. Give them a round of applause, all of our alumni. Thank you. Thank you. We also have several other special guests. want to give thanks to Dr. Lemon, Dr. Molly Brown, and Professor Henry for bringing your guests this morning from your, your, uh, from your conference that you're having. Thank you for being here. We appreciate the opportunity to share with you today. But later today, the National Alumni Association will have their luncheon, which is already sold out. So if you have a ticket, you know exactly where to be. I'm not going to tell you the location. That way you cannot crash it. But that way, if you have a ticket, you know exactly where you're supposed to be. That was in the notes that Amani gave me, so I'm just reading them. Uh, then next, we have our business meeting for the National Alumni Association at 2 p.m. in Peace Hall, room 127. Uh, so we want all our active members of the National Alumni Association to join us there. I believe other alumni is an opportunity for you to sign up and pay your dues today to become a paid member of the National Alumni Association. I believe they'll be taking them there, right, Dr. Thomas? Thank you very much. Also, um, tomorrow we will have our open house. So we are starting tomorrow. Many of our faculty, staff, and students are here today. We're opening up the campus to our community. We hope that you can join us for that event on tomorrow. We also have on tomorrow our spring football game. So you have an opportunity to see the Golden Rams and Coach uh, Quinn Gray on tomorrow. So please join us for that also. And then we have a little thing called a Blue and Gold Scholarship Gala tomorrow evening starting at 5 o'clock. The tickets were on sale and sponsorships were on sale. We are sold out. We want to thank you. We're going to have, we have accounted for over 600 people to attend the event on tomorrow. It'll be our largest one yet. This is our third time out of the gate. So thank you all for your support. And then finally, I would love to recognize my cabinet colleagues who are here today. Uh, we have Dr. Angela Peters, who is our provost and vice president for academic affairs. <laughs> Uh, Ms. Ola Terrell Jordan, who is our Chief Human Resources Officer. Ola, who is a three-time alumnus of Albany State University, right? Three-time alumnus. And then we have, who really doesn't need an introduction, she's been here a long time doing many, many different things, the President's Chief of Staff and my good friend and our Vice President for University Relations, Dr. Wendy Wilson. And then finally, I would like to recognize, and I know they're all around the room uh, doing several different things, but the team from the Division of University Advancement and our folks from Facilities Management and Aladdin Diamond Services for all the work that you've done today and quite a bit of work that you have to do later today and tomorrow. Uh, so thank you all for being here and for all that you have done in support of Albany State University. It has been indeed a pleasure and an honor for me to serve as your presiding officer today and during my tenure here at the unsinkable and indestructible Albany State University. And without further ado, we'll turn things over to Dr. Hood once again and the chamber singers as they regale us and we attempt to join them for those of us who know the words very well <laughs> and those of us who are great singers. If not, you can mouth the words. We still want you to participate. This is a family function as we go into the uh, great site ceremony led here now by Dr. Hood with the alma mater, Dr. Hood and the ASU chamber singer. Thank you.
At this time, we will begin the gravesite ceremony with Dr. Israel L. Eady Sr., who is a 1971 graduate of Albany State University, who will be providing a selection, and then the prayer and memorial statement by Pastor Ken Bevel of the Sherwood Baptist Church. Dr. Eady and Pastor Bevel. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. stars in the courses above join with all nature and manifold witness to thy great faithfulness mercy and love great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see all I have needed thy hand hath provided great is thy faithfulness Lord unto me oh great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness think about the day as you look around at the, the sun and the clouds I wonder if it was a day like today when this university first started I wonder did the founder think or even imagine that so many lives will be changed so many people will be educated the destiny of so many would be changed because of one idea of seeing things better in his community, but not just seeing things better in the community, but giving God the praise through it all. And then I also wonder in my mind how many people are standing here today and you're thinking to yourself, just like Dr. Holly, what can I do today to make an impact in my community, for this world, and in my family? And so as we sit today and we memorialize and we think about and we remember and we celebrate the accomplishments of Dr. Holly, we also think about the impact that he's made just from one single idea. Maybe I can. And I'm thinking now today there's somebody out there with the courage saying maybe I can. Maybe I can start a university. Maybe I can start a business. Maybe I can be a husband, a good husband. Maybe I can be a good father. Maybe just I can. And my prayer is that 120 years from now, it won't be me standing here, hopefully. <laughs> It'll be other young men and young women that'll be standing here and they'll be talking about you, the difference that you've made, the prayers that were prayed on this location because you had the courage enough to follow the dream that God has put in your heart. And so as we stand today, as we memorialize, let us pray and just thank God for the moment. But not only thank God for the moment, 
thank God for the lives that have been changed and will be changed because someone had a dream and they were courageous enough to stand up and walk in it. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for the Holly family. And God, as we sit here on this day and we think about the decisions that were made on this campus, the prayers that were prayed on this campus, the scriptures that were read on this campus, God, you gave one man courage, placed it in his heart to start a university, a college at that time. And Lord, he had the courage enough to carry it out. It was definitely not an easy task, but he was a man fit for the task. And Lord, today, we stand 120 years later thanking you for the families, the individuals, lives that have been changed. Education has played a great, great role in that. But Lord, when we look back and we see the families being able to provide for themselves, being able to provide for others in their community, God, we just so, 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 we are so grateful. And so Lord, today as we leave this place, I pray that you will birth in the heart of young men and young women here. Whatever you put in their heart, that they have the courage to carry it out. And we're not just celebrating a time when someone has passed away, but God, we're also celebrating a moment of new life and courage and a dream in someone else's heart. So Lord, would you be with us today? Continue to spark the uh, renaissance in the hearts of your people. Lord, we love you and we thank you for this moment. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now the Holly family will come and lay the wreaths. Yes, we'd ask that Mr. and Ms. ASU, uh, Ms. Park and President Frederick, if you please come forward to assist the Holly family with the laying of the wreaths. It is now time for the benediction. Gracious and eternal Father, Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this wonderful campus. Thank you for the leadership here at this campus. We thank you for the impact that they're making throughout this community, Southwest Georgia and the United States. Thank you so much. God, what you have birthed in the hearts of the founder and the leaders here, God, we are so thankful. God, would you continue to be with us and God, my prayer is that you will continue to raise up bold leaders, courageous leaders that were, who are prepared to take the education to the next level, but not just for themselves, but for the good of all people around them. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day and we thank you for this wonderful family. Would you continue to bless us and be with us? It is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. You're dismissed. Thank you for being here today. This concludes the gravesite ceremony. We look forward to seeing you this weekend at other Founders Day weekend events.